Basically, we have something for everybody, as long as they're interested. Um, they, uh, they need to uh, be able to read and write in English to be able to do the courses. Uh, but essentially, uh, certainly for the 10-week courses and the weekends, anyone can come and do them. And then, uh, as their experience grows a little bit, they can do more in-depth courses over longer periods of time. But it, there's, there's no bar to anybody. We welcome everybody and we want everyone to get involved. So one of the key things about any site is that it can't be understood in isolation. I think it's the fact you never know what you're going to find. You know, it's always so exciting when you come across something, even the tiniest little piece of pottery, and you think, where did this come from? Who touched this before? Who was the last person to touch this before me? And I just find that so exciting. Well, as you might expect from an urban site, so this is a walled Roman town, it's got a substantial population, although we've no idea what that actual number might be. But as you might expect, lots of domestic detritus, so lots of broken pots and butchery waste, uh, the remains of people's meals, you'll see oyster shells scattered all over the site. Um, but we also find more, um, for us, special things, uh, little coins, uh, perhaps casual losses falling out of people's pouches or out of their hand during transactions being carried on roadside. Um, it's very nice to have that sort of personal connection with the past and we've been really fortunate that our students have been able to excavate these things because they get very excited about having that personal connection with the past. When the students come to us, um, they come with a varied degree of experience, but we offer them the opportunity to not only learn how to excavate, but also to record, which is a vital part of archaeology. So they're taught everything from simple troweling and matticking excavation techniques, uh, how to keep a straight section and a tidy site, but they're also taught how to record the section for posterity, because actually all archaeology is a form of destruction. And so the most vital thing that they can learn is how to record what they've seen and, and make that part of the academic record. We have people from all walks of life and from all demographics, uh, all ages, and, and various levels of experience, both in archaeology or in other areas of their lives. And what's wonderful about the subject is that everyone from any walk of life brings something to it um, and, 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 and takes something away from it as well. I found a lovely uh, late 4th century Roman coin, which although admittedly there have been many found on the site, that was, that was good fun, that was nice to find. It's sort of something that could be further identified and, you know, sort of bagged and sort of catalogued, but, you know, it was a nice find, I was very pleased with that. We had this very unusual find today, which was um, a small Roman beaker, or the remains of one. You have, uh, you know, quite a few pieces, including edge pieces, like this where you can see the lip of it, and the base, which is uh, a beautiful specimen, it's uh, completely whole. You can see the beginnings of the designs on there. Um, this is unusual because we don't often find pieces from the same vessels together. Um, because this is such a special find, we have given it what's called a small finds number, which distinguishes it from all of the other finds on the site. So it has a unique identifier. It has the number that tells us where exactly, what part of the trench it came out of, and then what it is and what site it was found in. So once it's bagged, we bring it in here. We gently wash it just with water and a, a soft brush um, to get all of the dirt off of it that we can, all the surface dirt. Um, and then we set it out to dry in the sun. And then once all of the pieces are dry, then it will all go back into the bag so that if in the future the uh, conservators decide to reassemble it, they can. In the department, we search for the best and most interesting sites for people to come and work on. We're not just doing uh, uh, pretend archaeology. This is the real thing. It's real research, and everyone that we teach gets involved in that. Just behind me, under the flat lawn that's just a garden now, 
is the uh, site of the cloisters of the medieval abbey, which was a typical cloister. It was a quadrangle with buildings arranged around a square garden, and that has now gone completely because it was demolished at the Reformation in the 16th century. But using geophysics, we managed to find the plan of it, and it's quite complex, but very clear, and that's really fantastic. That's a really new discovery, and it was continuing education students that did that. Archaeology is all about discovery and not just the finding of things, artefacts and structures in the ground, but also discovering ideas and discovering you know, theories and, and ways of looking at the past. And that really grabs people and you can participate in it as an individual. You're not just witnessing experts doing it, you can actually get involved yourself. All you need is an interest in archaeology, a desire to learn and some enthusiasm. It always leaves you wanting more. I think when you leave a, a dig, you just think, when can I get back?